Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we will be discussing two topics for the topics of vectors, uh, and the topics are addition of vectors and section formula. In the first video, we discussed very basic things like position vector, line vector, free vector, and unit vector and its magnitude. I hope that you have uh, watched that video because it is very important to know these basic concepts of position vector and line vectors. Now we have defined vectors, but we should also know how to add vectors, uh, and that is the idea behind this uh, uh, this video. Okay, so let us start correctly dire directly and go into the addition of vectors. So addition of vectors is defined by two uh, two laws, uh, and the first is called a triangle law. Uh, and the second is called the parallelogram law. Basically, both of them are essentially the same thing, but I just want to cover them in case you hear about them. Uh, so, what is triangle law? Triangle law says that if you have a vector a, and now what is this vector? I have not specified any direction or uh, uh, any point or any line. So, this is a free vector. So, I hope you now recall from the last video what is a free vector. Free vector is a vector that has a fixed direction and magnitude and can move freely around this space. Okay. Now, and if there is a vector which joins this as b vector, then if I form the triangle such that I start from this point and then I go to this point as c, then c vector is nothing but a vector plus b vector. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of people get confused about this. What does, how do we take the direction of this? And I'll give you examples to always remember this. So, how do we all, how do we define the direction uh, in a, how, which, how, how do we add a plus b to make it equal to c? So, always pick a starting point. So, let us say I pick the starting point. Then go follow the direction of the arrow. And, and go till the point the direction is the same. So in this case direction is here and the direction is here. So we added this and in this case the direction is opposite. So we stop here and then we add make the last point th this vector the same as the addition of 2. I will give you more examples so that you will be able to understand this. I hope that still this was still did this makes some made this made some sense. I will go in over more details about this. So just I hope but I hope that this was at least you were able to understand what I was saying. So start from the point and keep following till you are in the same direction of the arrow and stop whenever you see the opposite direction of the arrow. Okay. Uh, now let us look at parallelogram law. Parallelogram law is essentially the same thing. However, uh, what what in what happens in parallelogram law is that if you have a a vector and a b vector, and if you have a pa if you make a parallelogram, then the diagonal of this parallelogram c vector is the same as a vector plus b vector. Uh, and you can imagine that this is nothing but the same thing as like a triangle law because if I make a parallelogram, a parallelogram means that you have parallel sides so that this side and this sides are parallel. If they are parallel, that means they have the same direction and the same magnitude. Okay. So since this vector A is a free vector, I can just take it up like this. Again, remember free vector is free to rotate around the space. If it has the same direction and same magnitude, it is the same vector. So, if this vector is a vector, this vector is a vector, then if I apply par, if I have applied triangle law in this triangle, then I start from here b vector plus a vector and I stop because this arrow is in the opposite direction. So, I write c vector is equal to a vector plus b vector. Okay. I will do more examples in case there is some confusion. So, I hope you are able to understand triangle law and parallelogram law. Now, let us take some examples to see what, what do we mean by that. Okay, I have been given a figure, so let me take an example here. Example. Okay. So the example is that if you have a vector, b vector like this, c vector here, d vector like this. And e vector like this. Okay. The question is find the value of d vector in terms of a, b, and e. Question is find the value of d vector in terms of 
A, B, and E. Okay. So, how do we start even st even start this problem? So, we want to find D in terms of A, B, and E. So, basically, we want to eliminate the C vector. Okay. So, we need two equations. One because we can clearly see two triangles. One triangle is this triangle. This is the first triangle. This one and the second triangle is this. Okay. So what we can do is we can apply triangular law, triangle law in first triangle, in triangle one. In triangle one, how will you apply the law? So we'll start with the point and go till the point has the same direction. Okay. So if I start here. And if I keep on going here, then I am oh, but I reach the direction at which the direction is opposite. So what I can do is I can start from here, keep on going till I have the same direction, like this, and then I reach. Uh, so E and D have the same direction, so they can be added, and then C will be equal to that. So I hope this makes sense. That C vector is equal to D vector plus E vector. I hope that this makes sense because if I start from E and then go till D, then the, I am following the arrow, and then C connects. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if I look at this triangle, which is the ABC triangle, so in triangle two, in triangle two, if I start from C, C plus B should be equal to A. So A vector is equal to C plus B vector. Okay. Now you can eliminate, you can eliminate them by adding. Add. You can eliminate C vector, so this will become C vector plus A vector is equal to C vector plus D vector plus B vector plus E vector, and then this gets cancelled out. So D vector is equal to A vector minus B vector minus E vector. Okay, and does this make sense? Does this does this law somehow make sense? Uh, and you will be able to see that if we if i just look at the whole polygon if we just look at the whole polygon then what is happening is really is that the triangle law can be generalized the triangle law can be generalized and if i have just have a whole polygon then if i start from e then d then b is equal to a so i can now directly write from here so poly triangle law can be generalized so if you have entire vectors of a polygon then you can also do the same thing keep on following the same direction and then just is equal to the same as in the opposite direction what what i mean that what i mean by that is if you have here you start by e d then b vector and this is equal to something at the last so e vector plus d vector plus b vector is equal to a vector and this is actually the same thing which you have found out at the end so you can actually also do a trick by directly doing this rather than writing two steps however i hope that this makes sense i hope that you are able to understand how to use the direction how to add these vectors so now let us move on to section formula uh, so section formula is very handy uh, and section formula is basically used for position vectors this is something i want to specify very it's a very important thing section formula is used for position vectors okay and what do i mean by that what is section formula is that if you have a point a and you have a vector a again this means that this is a position vector and you have another point b which has a vector b here and this is again the position vector and you have a point c here c vector and this ratio at which it divides it like the length of ac to the length of cb is m is to n then i can write the position c so again c is the position a is the position b is the position position vector again and again position vector please go to through the first part of the uh, video of this chapter and clearly learn what is position vector if you are if you are not clear about this you will face a lot of problems when i am solving questions on this so what this means is c vector i can multiply m with b vector and n with a vector and then have m plus n in the denominator 
this is for this is what is section formula essentially and this is nothing but trying to find a coordinate of a point which is in between a and b sometimes you can also get a uh, right section formula in a case when c is not on the same is not in between the, the two things and c is somewhere here and again you have a vector b vector and c vector and again the length length is if this is m and this is n then rather than adding you actually subtract you can write c vector as and you can learn it like this m minus n divided by m minus n first you just write this and multiply m with far away vector a vector and then b would be multiplied with n vector and then you can have m minus n here okay so let me quickly have a question here find the midpoint of points 1 comma 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 3 comma 1 okay find the midpoints of 1 comma 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 3 comma 1 so what does this mean is this means is the, this means that a vector and this is if this is b vector and i want to find c vector this is 1 and this is also 1 midpoint and a vector is i cap plus j cap plus k cap again you just had px i plus py j plus pk cap remember position vector if you are not familiar with it, please go to the first video and learn that b vector is 2 i cap plus 3 j cap plus 4 k cap uh, plus k cap And two uh, i cap plus three j cap plus k cap, just adding i j k to them, and then c vector would be m is equal to one and n is equal to one. Then this will be a plus b by two, and that will be three i cap plus four j cap plus two k cap by two. Okay, so I hope that this made some sense. So now that we have learned addition of vectors and section formula, in the next video we will be solving a lot of problems related to section formula. and they form a very important class of problems uh, in which basically we try to find coordinates of different things so i hope that this video was useful you were able to follow the triangle law parallelogram law and then this example in which you generalized also to a polygon law and then in the section formula how we define section formula only for position vectors only trying to find the coordinates uh, and then we just did a very small and brief example of that i hope you enjoyed the video and in the next video we will be talking and taking some examples for section formula thank you